Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I truly love where God is leading this ministry, you know, as we begin to just, as we fall in line, y'all say fall in line. Fall in line. As we fall in line, God begins to reveal purpose. As we fall in line, he begins to reveal and make more uh, vivid to you purpose and clarity, even in this ministry. This ministry was, uh, I guess, spoken over in regards to the man being in his image, in his image, in his image. Sound really good, you know. But as we begin to grow and we begin to fall in line, he begins to reveal more and more the whys, the purpose, the reason why, in his image. Definitely. Glory to God. So I really believe that God is allowing us to be able to know who our true identity is. Amen. Amen. So as we begin to hear word after word, teaching after teaching, he begins to reveal to us our identity. Y'all say our identity. Our identity. We, we must know, and y'all hear me reiterate that weekly in our discipleship teaching, that we must know who we are. Amen, amen. If we know who we are, we know how to move about. So God is teaching us, as Sister Judea said so powerfully, that we're not just Christians. We're not, it's not about just salvation. Amen? <laughs> it's about knowing what that means. Yeah. It, it's about knowing who you are. Yeah. It's about knowing the benefit of being saved and the power that is entailed in that word salvation. Uh, Amen? That's what she was amen. talking about. So I just thank God for that. I'm going to stay in the same vein of that, even with Minister Geo this past Wednesday. You know, allowing us to know that God has taken us out of darkness and put us in his light. Amen. Y'all say we are the children of the light. We are the children of the light. Amen. Hallelujah. We are sons, hallelujah, and daughters of the light. Children of the day. That's not just a word, but even as we heard the word on Wednesday, just broken down, allowing us to know, y'all, that's our identity. It's not just walking physically into a light. It's who you are. Yeah, well, Amen. You are the light. Glory to God. And in the midst of us understanding, y'all, there is work to do, like Sister Judea said. There is Amen. work to do. Amen. And we must work and work until we know who we are so we can great walk in that great level of authority. Oh, so, y'all, I'm going to stay in that same vein as I mentioned. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 is just the same vein. I'm staying in the same vein. Yeah. Our identity. Lord Our identity. Our identity. Right. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this verse of scripture and then I'll let us know what our title is and we'll move forward and break it down. Y'all say break it down. Break it down. Hallelujah. Yeah. Galatians chapter 5 yeah. verse 1 says, Stand fast. Or, in other words, stand strong. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again, y'all say again. Again. Again, with a yoke of bondage. Stand therefore, or stand strong, stand fast in the liberty. Meaning, if you listen to that, it's work to do. Work to do, knowing who I am. And of course, we heard that scripture many, many times. It tells us not to allow ourselves to be entangled again. That means you were there before. Oh you know, say that I was there before. I was there before. He says, stand strong in it, in the liberty, the revelation, the knowing. Again, he said, therefore, stand fast in the liberty, liberty in which Christ has made you free. Yeah. He has made you free. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, don't be entangled again. Okay, and that same uh -huh. bondage he brought you out of. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, that sounds really good, Lady Hamilton. The word is strong. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I don't even know how to handle that. That sounds like a powerful word, but when I get home, I don't know. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm troubled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh, my God. That's not it. 
And I always say the greatest victory of knowing something, or it's just a revelation of knowing it makes you free to things. Amen. Like for example, if I'm blind to something, I'm gonna kind of walk blinded and ignorantly in a situation, right? Yeah. But if I know what's going on, it gives me a greater confidence. Does that make sense? Talk to me. So as Amen. we begin to become more confident in knowing what that means, we start walking like this. Yes, we do. Right? Oh, talk to us. You know? So we're going to go back before this so we can understand Amen. what that means. Y'all say my identity. My identity. The title of what I'm speaking of is We Are the Children of the Promise. We are the children of the promise. Remember, we're the children of the light. Amen. Sons and daughters, we're the children of the day. Amen. That's a part of our identity. Yeah, this is a heavy uh, topic. But you also are the children of the promise. Hallelujah. Children of the promise. So in order, in order to understand what that means, we're going to back it up a little bit into verse 22. God is good. Amen. And I'm going to just give a little bit of a summary because we don't have time to go through the whole story. Those of you who may or may not be familiar with the story of Abraham and Sarah, you know, um, and even Hagar, but we're going to learn it a little bit today. Amen. Uh, Sister Judea, can you read verse 22 for me out loud? Verse 22. Just read it out loud. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 22. Galatians 5, verse, no, I'm sorry, 4, verse 22. I apologize. I'm sorry. Y'all. I apologize. 4. 4 and 22. I'll say back it up, huh? <laughs> 4 and 22. Amen. She says, for it is written, verse 22, she said, it, it is written that Abraham had two sons. Oh my God. The one by a bond woman and the other by a free woman. Right. Same man, yeah. two sons. Oh y'all say, same man, same man. two sons. Amen. 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 And I want y'all to keep in mind these key words. If you have your Bible, underline free woman and bond woman. Free woman and bond woman. Underline. It's going to be very important to your identity. Understanding who you actually are, yes. what you once were, and what you are now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Brother Elijah, can you read verse 23 to me out loud? Glory to God. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh. Read a little bit loud, Elijah. Ooh. Read a little bit loud. Yeah. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh. Yeah. While the son of the free woman was born through promise. Ooh. Hallelujah. Well, hear that. Oh, 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 oh. One man, two sons. One man. Oh. One son was born of the bond woman. By the flesh. Mm -hmm. By the flesh. And one woman was born by the free woman. So let me give y'all a little bit of a background so you kind of know what that means a little bit. Again, the story of Abraham, Sarah. Um, y'all, y'all say back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Amen. You know, <laughs> I knew it was gonna do that. Um, Abraham and Sarah were married. Amen. They were up in age. She couldn't have a, have a child. Amen. Um, I'm trying to give it a big a summary. There, there was a promise that she would bear a son later on, but before she had the promise given to her, she could not bear. And I want y'all to hear me in the spirit. She could not bear. So because she could not bear and the desire to have a son was such in her heart, I don't know what that means to say. <laughs> I'm saying, go, go over there and talk to Hagar. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so Josiah said, don't want him to talk to Hagar. He went ahead of me. Amen. But the story goes on to where Sarah, just like us, we can't wait on God. We believe in God for our promise. We believe in God for something, right? Yeah. But we can't yeah. wait. Yeah. We can't wait. So what does she do? Since I can't, you know, I'm going to just bring it in layman, layman terms here. You know, she went to him and like, you know, since I can't give you a son, and back in the back in the day especially, if you couldn't have children, you felt cursed. You have children, and the more children you have, you are blessed. That was the thought, and that was the way things were, y'all say, back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. So she said, why don't you go into my handmaid, handmaidens, Hagar? Once you go on and just like sleep with her, she could go on and get pregnant, have a child for us, and we'll have a child. Right. 
easy, right? So that's what they did. Here God say, hey, Abraham said, don't mind if I do. But oh they did, right? So y'all say they had a plan. 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 But little did they know that that plan was going to blow up in their face. Oh boy. Yeah. Little did they, y'all say little did they know. Little, little did they know. They, we want to wait on God for a blessing. Uh-uh, hold up. But we take, he's taking too long. Oh, so we figure out a way to make it work. Yeah, we can help God. Amen. Amen. We help it God. Right. But what we don't understand is when you bypass the plan of God, you go into a place of sin. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. So the plan went on to say, hey, let's just have a child. My, she's, my, she's my maid, so she's clearly going to do what we want her to do. She's going to chill. You know, she's going to be all right here with every child, whatever. Here you go. You know, I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm submitted to you. I'm going to let you have my child. Have my child. But time went on, trying to bring a conclusion to this, kind of quicken it up a little bit. It didn't go as planned. When Hagar had that child, her emotions got involved. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to let go of that child anymore. All right. Amen? Right. Amen. She began to start, <laughs> wait a minute, I actually had relations with yeah. this man. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So therefore, it's not just as simple as we thought it was going to be. I got feelings for him now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Y'all say the plan mm-hmm. didn't go as planned. Plan plan. 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 And then of course, without looking at the soap operas on TV, y'all can pretty much figure out how that went. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Y'all say he had a son. He had, he had a son. But it wasn't the son promised. But it wasn't the son promised. It wasn't the son promised. So it was born out of sin. It was born, born out of bondage. That is Y'all hear that? Now, again, fast forward in the story. Eventually, the Lord moved upon Sarah. Sarah did bear a son. According to the promise. Because that's what God promised her. Y'all say, God did give me a promise. God did give me a promise. And he would never go back on his promises. He would never go back into a promise. But it's for an appointed time. Y'all hear that? It's for an appointed time. So she bore a son. His name was Isaac. So we have one son from the handmaiden. His name was Ishmael. Ishmael. That's remember we one one man, two sons. We just read that, right? Uh-huh. Ishmael was the son given through the handmaiden Hagar. Right? Then Sarah came along, finally had the son of promise, which was Isaac. Amen. So therefore, here we go, talking about. But he was born of, of the body woman, was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through the promise. Yeah. So we got that part, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. So everything that we read in the daytime, we still read in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament is very, very vital to us moving forward even in the New Testament. Y'all say type and shadow. Type and shadow. Type That's and what shadow. the Bible talks about. It says in the Bible that the Old Testament is like type and shadow. Right? Symbolic things. Okay. There are things in the in the natural, in the Old Testament that we read in natural things is now symbolic to what's taking place to us in the New Testament, in the spirit. Indeed. Does that make sense? So while we're reading this story and he's giving evidence of what took place, he's breaking down to you what happened. But in verse 24. Can we read? Can someone read to me verse 24? Now, this may be interpreted alleg- alleg- allegory. Allegory. This one is our two covenants. It's from Mount Sinai. Sinai? Sinai. Sinai. Mm-hmm. Sinai. Thank you. Bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Mm-hmm. Amen. So y'all hear that? Mm. Which things are symbolic minds say the same thing. For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, and I'll read verse 25. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. 
Right. We just read the story in the natural. Boy. But he's talking about it being type and shadow. He's talking about it being symbolic. There is a Mount Sinai in Arabia. I need y'all to understand, this man, Abraham, was the father of the faith. Have y'all heard that before? Yes. There were promises that God had given to Abraham that happened. And I need y'all to understand something. Because Ishmael came out of the loins of Abraham, he still received a nation. Uh -huh. He still received something. Right. But that streamline Amen. is a streamline of bondage. Ooh, wow. Are y'all hearing me in the spirit? That direction, that decision, mm -hmm. basically allowed that particular, I guess, umbrella over Ishmael to be bondage. Mm -hmm. It says he's symbolic to Mount Sinai in Arabia, is a place that gives birth to bondage. In your life, there are things that we are doing, there are things that we make decisions that is not of God. If we continue on that decision, we give birth to bondage. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But then, he says, and I need to give y'all this information because it's so, so vital. I want to give it to you in a way of uh, the natural portion of it, amen? Because it's symbolic to what we're getting to and where we're going. Does that make sense? Yeah. He says, it corresponds with Jerusalem, which is now, and which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But verse 26 says, but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. I need to go real quickly. Can someone go with me to Isaiah 2, ver chapter 2, verse 2? I got it. Because, again, there is a lot of things that's behind what he's saying. This is allowing us to understand the promise. Chapter 2? Yeah. Can someone read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2? Chapter 2, verse 2. Read the it out. The days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. People is true to people is true to it. Amen. I'll read it in my in my uh, New King James version. It says, "Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it." Y'all yeah. hear that? Yeah. Yeah. He's saying that the child of the free woman is symbolic to Jerusalem, yeah. which is a place of freedom, the mother of us all. It is the flow and a streamline in which God is speaking naturally. We have to understand the promise in the realm of the spirit. Right. I'm trying to get us to understand our identity and where we are a part of the free woman, not the bond woman. As people of God, a part of the promise that he promised to Sarah, I'm going to give you a child. His name is going to be Isaac. He is the son of the promise. Fast forward into now, we have to understand that the, what, what he's speaking of naturally is what we're dealing with now spiritually. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. 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 So, we are not of the bond woman. We are of the free woman. The promise is Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Amen? The Bible talks about Jerusalem and what she will be. He says that streamline of the promise is going through Jerusalem, the mother of us, of us all. Amen? So, therefore, therefore, yes. verse 28 says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, our children of the promise. Right. Okay? I gave all of that background just for us to understand our geographical birthright. Does that make sense? Yes, Lord. Yes, if we understand all those things, now we understand the benefits and the rights that we have as free children of God. We are now a part of that promise. Yes. Amen? So, if we are experiencing certain things that is not a part of our inheritance, 
Could that be part of the problem? Could it be the struggles that we're dealing with because we don't understand that we have picked up the wrong inheritance? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. We attracted to the wrong inheritance. So in verse 29, as we move along, it says, but as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Boy. Cast out the bond woman and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Okay, I'm going to give y'all natural back background of what basically speaking of. Okay, fast forward, Sarah gave birth to a son. He became of age. She weaned him off, right? Weaned him off me, y'all know what that means. He was... Okay, we off the breast. Right. Amen. He was, yeah, he was done. He was done with that portion of it. Amen. But mind you, y'all, who was born first? Okay. I, I mean, uh, Ishmael. Yeah. Ishmael. So if Ishmael was born first, he was older, right? Right. So the older one began to taunt the younger one. He began to mock the other one. Because think about it. If he's the firstborn, back then, the firstborn received the inheritance. Right? Mm -hmm. The firstborn was the heir. Yeah. So as Ishmael began to mock little Isaac, he began to persecute him. He began to make him feel this and that because maybe being that young, hear me in the spirit, y'all. Maybe being that young, he didn't even understand that he was actually the promise. Mm -hmm. But because he was younger, the older one began to taunt him. I need y'all to hear me. Question who he is. He's making him question who he really is. So you know what Sarah did? Sarah said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Mm -hmm. He, he got to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take him and his mom and get him out of here. She said, he will not be heir with the son of promise. Some stuff was going on yet, y'all. Even in the mind of that person, he began to think, oh yeah, I can imagine, oh yeah, you know I'm this and I'm that. Well, you know this belongs to me, right? You know that you blah, you're going to bow to me. You know that you're the younger son, right? And he began to talk in them. And, and the Bible said that Sarah got wind of what was taking place. Oh, yeah, and she said, wait a minute, maybe he think he's the heir. Maybe he think mm. this is going to, all, all the inheritance is going to go to him. And mind you, she put him there. You know, and for the sake of things, take a time again. Y'all go back and read the story. It starts in Genesis chapter 16. Well, it doesn't start, but where it breaks down when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. Okay. In chapter 16, y'all can move forward and even chapter 21, it talks about when Sarah gave birth. And even in that part, she talks about he began to talk. He uh, taught him. He began to, he get, the, the, the New Testament said persecute. In the Old Testament, it talks about he mocked him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He taunted him. He was speaking at him, attacking him, getting in his mind, making him not know who he is, trying to convince him that your heirship is under me. I need y'all to hear what is taking place in the spirit. Because your modern day Ishmael is the enemy. Your modern day Ishmael is the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of the darkness taught at you. How many have been attacked in your mind? Amen. How many mm -hmm. go through situations where you have to sometimes have to question who you are in God? Yeah, Am man. I the only one? Amen. That 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 enemy, that, that son of bondage right. would taunt me and make me feel as if I wasn't a part of what God says. He, you know, I was a part yeah. of it. So we begin to believe the lie. Y'all say, believe the lie. Believe the lie. Believe the lie. So Sarah said, he got to go. He got to go. And guess what? He had, he had to go. Now, mind you, I said earlier, feelings got involved. Uh -huh. uh, yet, like Pastor said, he caught them feelings. <laughs> and when Sarah said he has to go, the Bible says that Abraham was like, no, he not. That's my job. 
And, and he was adamant about it because again, feelings got involved. Don't y'all know that when we intermingle and entangle ourselves in the things of darkness, we can get entangled with that thing. We start falling in love with disobedience and bondage. Amen. Have we, have, am I the only one been there? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But she began to say, gotta go. Because there ain't no way dude think he gonna have the inheritance. My son is the son of the inheritance of the promise. Abraham got mad. The angel said, don't stop her. She right. Let her go. Let the son go. He had to separate it. So I think it's very important what is being put here before we get to verse 1 in chapter 5. Because it helps us to understand why he's telling us to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. He says in verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Amen. 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 So I want us to Amen. understand this, y'all. We got to be able to understand. Say, I'm a child of the promise. I am a child, I'm a child of the promise. I'm a child of the free woman. I'm a child of the free woman. Not the bond woman. Not the bond woman. woman. Y'all, y'all airship and y'all promise is not through the streamline where it gives birth to bondage exactly. of the flesh. We're constantly being taught that we are born of the spirit. We are born of the spirit. We are born in a place where nations will flow into us. Jerusalem. This is the place where we have to begin to understand the authority that we have. Exactly. See, I said earlier, you have more confidence when you know something. If I didn't know who I was, and I didn't know the inheritance that I had, then I'll continue to let the enemy get at me. How many times you've been behind that computer? How many times you've been in the midst of a situation and you struggle with who you really are? And when you begin to struggle with who you really are, you lose the authority and the power to walk away. You gotta get to a place where you say, cast out, you gotta go devil. You gotta get out of here. You're not gonna connect with my inheritance. You're not gonna be at one with me. I am separated. Minister Gio said, we have been taken out of darkness and placed into the light. We have been taken out of bondage and been placed into freedom. Amen? There is a division, y'all. I need y'all to understand, again, what we're speaking of is deeper than the actual word, light. It's a geographical replacement. Amen? You have been placed in a new direction. You have been placed in a new uh, geographical uh, place. A new dimension. Amen? Y'all have to understand that. So when you begin to understand that, you walk in the authority. So you have to know who you are. You have to know your authority. You have to know your inheritance. You have to know that you are called to freedom. You have to know that you are of the promise. Amen? Amen. So now let's go back to verse uh, 1 and verse 5. Stand strong, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ, y'all say Christ. Christ. Y'all, I need y'all to understand, you didn't put yourself there. Christ put you there. And because Christ put you there, you are no longer on the, on the old inheritance. I know I'm just talking. I really need y'all to get it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because now that I know that I'm free, I don't have to be bound. Uh -huh. Because he took me out of the darkness and put me in the light. I like this. I like this. I like this. Think about that. I take a moment and hear that. It's not like a light switch. It's a place he's put you in. Okay? It's like this. If I was next in line on the throne right. to be queen or whatever, I know that I don't have to question it, Sister Beatrice, because I'm looking at the validity of the line. Yeah. I am next in line. Yeah. 
My confidence in knowing is knowing that I am next in line. So it cannot be taken away from me because it is my right to the throne. I like you, man. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I'm going to let that ponder for a second. <laughs> it's my right. It's my right to be free. It's my right to be free. Hear this, y'all. Let it settle. It's my right to be free. It's my right to be free. It's my right to I don't be have free. to apologize to you for my freedom. It's a part of my inheritance. Yeah, I mean, Amen. I used this um, situation last week or example last week when I said, how about you have money in the bank and you don't know the PIN number. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The bank account is in your name. Yeah. It's your money. You have right to have but you don't know the PIN number, Minister Sokova. And because I don't know that I have been placed into a new position, I'm no longer by. Yeah, that's right. I am free mm -hmm. by law, by by grace. I mean, you understand what I'm trying to say? It's sealed. Amen. Yeah. If I didn't know that, it's like me having a bank account. Not knowing the pin number, Sister Patrice, and not realizing that all I gotta do is call the bank mm -hmm. and get me a new one. Mm -hmm. right, right. It's still my money. It's still my money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can sit there for five years because I'm ignorant. Mm -hmm. You can sit in bondage for five years because right. you don't know mm -hmm. that you have now been placed in a promise. Mm -hmm. a, a promise of what? Freedom. Freedom. So he's saying, stand strong. How do you stand strong? That sounds to me, it's saying, be confident. It's a done deal in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Yeah, I like this. Thing. Through birth. Y'all say through birth. Through birth. Through birth. Through birth. Minister Cola, that's not your mama. That's not your mama. Oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> That's not, Sister Alice is not really your mom. I just need you to know that. Come, come She's not really your mom. So you've been staying out all your life. She's not even your mom. That's an attack. I adopted him. What? Right, right, right. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister Judea, you're not a female. Chemical test. You're not a female. That devil is a lie. <laughs> but how can you say the devil is a lie? Right. Y'all hear it. How can you say the devil is a lie? How can he tell me, Lady Hamilton, sorry, but respectfully, you a lie. My that love. is my mom. How? No. How? No one knows who you know. is. I mean, who you are. Yeah. Your identity. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm not married to Pastor Hamilton. Mm. I'm not married to Pastor. I'm really not. Uh -oh. <laughs> what? For 23 years, I've been staying at another house. I'm not married to Pastor Hamilton. Oh, my Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, it's straight up to He will go into the safe, into that little envelope, and pull out the proof that we have signatures on a certificate that says we're in holy matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to say, so what? <laughs> Do y'all hear me? Yeah, I like yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Josiah, you're not really my son. Darn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're not really my son. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Do y'all understand what That's I'm trying to go with this? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is trying to help us to be confident. Y'all, yeah. we don't have to be in that pornography. No, we, don't have, not at all. we don't have to be an adulterous offense. We don't have to. In Jesus name. We don't have to be stealing. No, we don't have to. We don't have to lie. I like that. We don't have to feel lonely. Yes. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. It's our decision. You're in bondage because you want to be. Oh, you want to be. Uh, You're in bondage because you want to be. I like that. Because, 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 because the inheritance you chose. Ooh. You're in the wrong inheritance. Yeah. See, that's all he's trying to say. The word that Minister Gio ministered was a, a word of, of identity. You are the children of the light. 
It is oh. your birthing, not just a physical situation. It's who you are now. Does that make sense? Amen. See, confidence make you walk in and say, you know what, well, I don't have to, well, I see what's happening. Yeah, she, she taking her clothes off on it, but I could just turn it off because I don't have to look at it. I don't have to. I don't, I don't need you. I don't have to. Why? Because I'm free. Amen. Do y'all, you see, it sounds simple, but when you're in that moment, if you don't know who you are, the enemy going to be just like Ishmael, constantly taunting you, mocking you, getting at you, telling you what you're not. Wrong inheritance. And we believe it. Wrong inheritance. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, thank you, Mr. We are the children of the promise, y'all. We, we fall under a line of inheritance. <laughs> and a part of our inheritance is freedom. Amen. Praise the Lord. My bloodline now is the woman of freedom. Uh -huh. yeah. The Amen. other inheritance is the mother that gives birth to bondage, Sister Beatrice. Straight out of the flesh. Everything I do on this side is bondage. Everything that we do, I'm going to give birth to bondage. Everything. He said that, right? Mount Sinai in Arabia, it gives birth to bondage. This is the streamline of the woman of bondage. The bond woman. But we are flowing through the home. Y'all say home. Home. Jerusalem. Home. I need y'all to understand that Jerusalem is the apple of God's eye. Jer everything is going to flow into Jerusalem. Amen? And we are of that inheritance. So I just want y'all to just be reminded we're constantly trying to know who we are. We're constantly trying to understand the freedom that we really, really have. Y'all, like this goes beyond Sunday morning attendance. Right, right. Yeah, I like that, I like that. This goes far beyond, I went to church on Sunday, so I get brownie points. No. Like Sister J Judea said, if you don't do the work, what's the point? What's the point? I'm saved, yes I am. I'm also free, even though I have money in the bank and don't have a pen number. Uh, yes. still free. I'm still free. I'm still saved, but I could be walking around doing any and everything because I'm saying he gonna save me anyway. He gonna forgive me anyway. But what you don't understand is the hell you gonna go through. All right, amen. Cause you're in bondage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be deceived. God is not mine. Whatever a man sowed, that's what he gonna reap. Amen. I didn't say that. The word says that. Yeah, I, I like stuff like that. Amen. 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 So we're not gonna Amen. be we're not gonna be a ministry, y'all here. I don't care if it's two people in this building. We're bear fruit regardless. We're gonna be two people walking in truth. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I like stuff like that. In this day that we are living in, y'all, it's that serious. Y'all yeah. say it's that serious. It's that serious. It's that serious. It's that serious. Sister Jay said, in the world that we're living in right now. If all you got is I'm saved, so you're not going to make it. Oh, you ain't going to survive. You have TV telling you what to, what to do. Straight uh, in. Yeah. You have social media every second telling you who you are. Yeah. That's right. Giving you a different inheritance to choose. That's not your inheritance. I need y'all to start speaking. That's not my inheritance. It's not my inheritance. I don't inheritance. care what you start going through. The moment we walk out this door, it is not lining up with the promise of freedom. See, that's not my inheritance. Amen. I'm Amen. the only one. Not my inheritance. Let's have sex. Not my inheritance. Amen. Not my love. Not now. Not now. Because it's going to make me deal with bondage. Amen. Because I'm on the other side. Now I got to fight bondage. For the one, for one, one decision that I made. Oh, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. Is that a part of your inheritance? Uh, yeah. Come on now. Identity, my love. I need y'all to hear me. We can dip and dab a little bit. But is that a part of your inheritance? Yes. Absolutely not. In the realm of the spirit, it's a bunch of Ishmael's Ooh, and a bunch of Isaac's Come on. every day. Yeah, yeah. Light, darkness. Light, darkness. Children of the day, children of the night. There was this movie, I can't even remember what it was, but it was something ungodly. I, I can't remember the title. But they called themselves the children of the night. The children of the night. Yeah, that's all demonic. Bondage. 
They work their work at night. But if you are the children of the day, revelation happens in the day. When lights go on, you see. Right. That's your inheritance. Revelation. You see things for what it really is. How many times you've been in the dark and something looked kind of scary? There was something sitting on the on the dresser. Right. And after a while, it started looking like. T-shirt. <laughs> is that a head? <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> No, no, no. And you begin to think in the dark, it becomes an illusion. Okay, okay. Darkness okay. begins to deceive you of what that shape looks like. All right. Right. And it's not even really that you turn it on as a vase or something. Yeah, yeah. But in the dark, it felt like a scary monster mm, coming at you. And then it start moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. 